actual recording is higher quality. <gasps> Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we talk about on- we make nerdy ideas cool. I think that's what we do, Pop. Am I getting that right? I don't know. It changes every day. I'm kind of conflicted about our entire future. How about that? How about that? <laughs> to kick off the pod. Well, can... <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why? Because we we went to one of the coolest events of our life uh, of our lives, I guess, unless we're the same person. We're conjoined twins, and we had some realizations. Uh, I want to talk about those, but uh, then on the, oh, no, the plane God. ride back, I was drawing a lot of things. It was like five hours. Those tend to be my most productive times on earth. And uh, God, I don't know where the T's at. I forgot how to podcast. Well, Pop, people should go watch this on YouTube because you're sitting back. You're shirted. A oh, new day, like a new that. pod. A new day, <laughs> a new pod. <laughs> I wasn't going to put on the shirt, but it's kind of cold. Uh, I don't want to open the windows because I'm just... Uh, I'm sneezing and, and scratching my eyes. It's terrible. I don't get why people like no, pollen countries. Uh, <laughs> hey, you want good news? I got good news for I you. Want well, the I got best some news. tea in me. I want the best news. Uh, we're going to drop this podcast today. Whoa! Are we? No. Because <laughs> we're caught up, dude. And I'm, I'm nice. in the hot seat. I'm going to edit these puppies. And by edit, I mean just put it straight out to the world. <laughs> oh, Because... Was that a- uh, fist bump because your assumption is all the editing in the world doesn't save a less than par story or just bad content so let's make sure our content's good which you know yeah yeah i'm like hey no one's really watching these anyway so better to focus on the things that can get people to watch this which is clips uh let's make really good clips with good stories and then maybe once people start watching the podcast they'll be like hey can you actually like make the edits good and once they start asking for that we'll make them good again but i also turned off comments on everything so you know <laughs> maybe we'll never hear back and it'll just stay me editing until i uh lose my mind but that's so we're looking for the that's feedback <laughs> but there, will, I forgot there will be no feedback wait what's the rationale for turning off all the comments because i think you, you've thought through that <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think through things sometimes. Um, well, I, I watched this clip recently, and it's about a troll, our first troll, and how I decided I just wanted to neg trolls. But then I get in this thing of I look on socials, and I'm looking through the comments, mostly positive, uh, which is like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's a cool feeling, but I already felt positive. And then one negative comment, and I think about that for a while. So I'm like, oh, how do we stop podcasting? Like, how do we not want to do this? which is aka the only way that we don't succeed. Well, we'd stop because the trolls get to us. It's like, you know, an easy way, the uh, Casey Neistat version is just like release to the world and never look at anything. But I do like looking at the views. And then if I see there's like 15 comments, I'm like, I can't avoid the temptation to look in the comments and see what people said. And then 14 are nice. And then one's mean. And I'm thinking about the mean one all the time. So uh, we don't even have people commenting this stuff yet. We only had one troll, but I already fucking <laughs> so that's where we're at shut down i think alex cooper from caller daddy uh, uh turned off comments on instagram yeah i i just there's very little upside and a lot of downside right i'm like i granted i love looking at comments on other people's youtube videos and tiktoks because it like makes me feel like i'm watching it with someone else versus alone but uh as the creator i don't know they're not as fun Hey, you want to know what we're going to talk about today, though? I oh, we didn't. Do, we got Pop. six more minutes. We got to juice it. No. Uh, hey, we did something cool. And by we did something cool, I mean you got invited to something cool and brought me as your plus one. Exactly one year. Exactly one year after we set out to make that a reality. So we started Smart that is- Media like march whatever of 2021 or something we target david sax saxy poo in like may to start making stuff for the all-in podcast and our goal for smart nonsense media was to just be in the same room as these people as our as our idols that's i don't know who are our idols david sax hassan minhaj at the time chamath chamath tim urban tim ferris obviously the besties uh naval ravikant 
That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good list of idols. That's a solid list. <laughs> so, so the goal was to get in the same room as these people. Let's do all this free work. Let's make whatever media we need to make, just to get in the same room as these people. Oh, Sean and Sam Purry. How about that, Sean and Sam Purry? And uh, in Sean doing and so, Sam Purry brothers, <laughs> brothers Grimm, dude. And in doing so, we'll have we'll have opened the doors to all this opportunity that we can seize for the rest of our lives. And one year to the day that we made that David Sachs video, I get an email from his wife, the lovely Jacqueline Sachs, inviting us to David's 50th birthday. How about that? Right. And what was kind of crazy is, okay, I think it was like May 19th through May 19th. So pretty nuts there. But uh, I think the week before, or basically you got the email right after All In Summit. So kind of... We went to the summit, which was like a year before we blitzed the podcast. So that was crazy gear. And then the day after, the day that we blitzed sax was when his wife invited us to his 50th birthday party, which is like the craziest birthday party ever. We're going to talk about it. But uh, but also not crazy at the same time. Crazy, but not crazy. That's why we're going to talk about it. But uh, when we're at the All In Summit, I was talking to this guy, Sahil. Uh, what's his last name? L A V I N G I A. Leave it up to Dude, there's also the Sahil audience Gupta in our it. emails, and I'm like, dude, oh. so tapped. Um, whatever. Sahil of Gumroad, uh, talking to him, and he's like, yeah, these events are cool, and a lot of people paid like seventy five hundred dollars. Uh, several hundred people paid that much to get in. It's like that's awesome, but you look, and there's still VIP, because the besties don't really want to hang out like the whole night. Maybe just a half hour just saying hi to people, but they want to do poker. They want to hang out, just like shoot the shit with their boys. That's why they're there. It's like this event's cool, but what's cooler is when you're invited and you're invited to something that no one's paying for because it'd just be silly to charge. And then the next day we get the invite to Sax's birthday. And it's like, oh, my body. My body. <laughs> so, and the, the preface is, well, the preface is, uh, it's it's NDA. We can't talk about, like, the specifics of who was there and what the happenings were. Yeah. But we want to talk about, like, our general, um, how about that, words? Our general, like, like lessons learned from, from getting there words. so quickly. General words. General lessons learned from getting there so quickly, seeing the absolute pinnacle and uh, kind of where we're at now and and what we're doing this all for because i don't know i don't know anymore right i think you want to go to a party with the paypal uh, mafia barring i won't name names <laughs> it's this is literally the end game it's like <laughs> that's like <laughs> right so that was that's the crazy thing about this is like the lessons learned the sort of surprises that we've had was going from literally sleeping on the floor to now being at a party of billionaires in a year and uh, like <laughs> we've arrived in theory granted we're not actually like uh, we're probably both in debt right now but like uh <laughs> in theory arrived we see what probably. that world is like and now we can be like oh is this the right thing to chase or not because this is the pinnacle there's nothing beyond a founder or, or like the paypal mafia's birthday party like that's speaking there's of, nothing beyond that so speaking of the pinnacle yeah do you want to start with the Bermuda Triangle? Or no, you want to go in chronological order, right? Well, I, I got because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a smart nonsense I guess birthday we could party start. if if we didn't come out of there with inside jokes and mental models <laughs> like the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> right. No, I love there's a couple related mental models here, <laughs> but basically picture this. Okay. It's David Sachs' 50th birthday party. So he's likely to invite all his friends who happened to also be around 50 years old. We, on the other hand, are basically half of that, literally half of that. So like 25 year olds. Now, the problem is that's pretty far. Like you don't tend to be friends with someone that's 50 years old. <laughs> also, their kids, they've had kids later in life. So they tend to be like 10 to 15 years old. <laughs> So we're in this weird gap, and I, I was feeling the gap because I was kind of hanging out with the 15-year-olds for a bit, but then it's like, no, they're, they're not even fully grown. Like, let's hang out with people that are at least fully grown, but they're super fully grown. So we're like, that's too much growth. So we're in this limbo. Uh, 
and we we also have this complete imposter syndrome of uh why are we here we're like objectively the least successful of all these successful people but it was also it was also a real yeah. imposter because i think we talked about this in the last episode but jacqueline thought i was someone else with a family <laughs> older did something like she, she she had me pinpointed as the wrong person we were literal imposters <laughs> right so uh we kind of get there and like uh there are different people in this world like some people will get to a party and they'll want to be like the life of the party and go and meet everyone uh, but that's really intimidating like mo actually i think very few people are like that what happens is we come into this party knowing absolutely no one versus pretty much everyone there at least has like five or 10 people they've seen before hung out with before. So, you know, you default to what makes you comfortable. You go and hang out with them. We just have each other. So we just kind of have to figure out how hanging out with each other, uh, is going to make us kind of social butterflies in a way, uh, in the gap, but it's weird. Luckily, luckily we're both like noticeably in this weird gap of, uh, everyone's older than us. And we're kind of just like, the semi coolish kids like hanging out together and it's like oh that's interesting what's going on there so we get one awesome drunk guy ryan he comes and talks to us and like that that loosens us up and then uh i mean keep in mind this is like a three day long weekend uh i think we can say where i don't know whatever this resort this five-star resort Mexico. that costs like between basically two thousand to twenty thousand dollars a night for these places and it's like insanity they rented out the entire resort and it's like i've, I've never even like uh understood how <laughs> something like that would work but uh so basically we don't know anyone what do we do and we're, we're too intimidated to go and have conversations with someone because it's like what would we even talk about like they've created billion dollar companies and we're just some scrubs that make videos on twitter <laughs> Mm, that's like and ah, it, to the to the what would you talk conversation <laughs> to the what would you talk about point it's like you said this earlier but this isn't a networking event this is like close friends and family that know each other right. and see each other once or twice a year and are like hankering to catch up this is not like a what's your name hankering? tag who do you work for hankering dude that's a weird word cuz I, I, I it sounded like it wasn't english i have a hankering <laughs> Yeah, I say that about um my family says that about hot dogs. These um uh it's like <laughs> chili dogs. Wiener, hot wieners. I say that about hot wieners a lot. Got a hankering Just on for a, a Saturday, wiener. hankering for a hot wiener. That's yeah, not right. I've never heard it referred <laughs> That's to not right. uh, with people. I, no, it's Wiener Wednesdays. <laughs> so on Wednesdays you have a hankering for hot wieners. But I've never heard a hankering for talking to people, but I respect well, it. You shouldn't hanker for hot wieners mostly what were we hankering for what did i say we were hankering for people that hang out once or twice a year and they have a hankering for hanging out together oh yeah so this isn't a networking event but that's all we're there to be able to do that's the point right so i'm gonna end uh, all my sentences with we get in that's this the world point of <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the point. Uh, so we're, the we're at uh, like maybe the first night and first or second night. I kind of forget. Oh, second night. Uh, we're, we're not going in chronological order. That'd make too much sense. Second night, we're there and it's like we're surrounded by these people. One of them we call Queso. And he's uh, the good idea. He's one of the most successful people there. <laughs> uh, and so Queso, we call him that because we see him and we also read a book about the PayPal mafia and like this guy is uh, like, we put him on a high pedestal because he, he's like, easy. I, I, I don't know how much to give away, but um, <laughs> okay. Well, he's no one of the important Queso. people there. They're all important, but he's very important. Okay. So Queso's there and we just see Queso wait, wait, wait. by himself You're the kind eating You're little the cheese. You're the kind of podcast host to give yeah, someone a pseudonym, Queso, and then explain every single detail about him. <laughs> Queso did this. Right. He was born here. Uh, he went to school this. here. He found it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go back. Uh, but so we both, like, 
Henry and I, we both see this person. We're like, oh, that's that person from the book. And, uh, and we're kind of nerding out. And then we see this person, but they're kind of awkward. And they just go over to this like cheese and meat stand and just get a bunch of cheeses. And they, they have the, like the little popsicle stick and they're like feeding themselves cheese with the popsicle stick all by themselves or toothpick. Toothpick is what I want to say. That'd be <laughs> fucking, <laughs> well, none of the round popsicle sticks. Are <laughs> terrible. But um, he's just feeding himself and we're looking at each other like, dude, that guy right there, like 15 feet away, eating cheese by himself. He is responsible for this. <laughs> and so the whole time we're just like, dude, if that's the pinnacle of life right there, eating cheese by yourself, like you've made it with multiple companies and that's, that's it is you're just kind of the awkward, uh, fly on the wall. It's like, and like, that's, yeah, we started questioning everything. We started questioning. Yeah. That's by the way, like that was us. We were talking to nobody being losers. I think that. With these, what we found is with these highly successful people, that characteristic is like the rule, not the exception. Being socially awkward uh, on the spectrum, like all these things, is the rule. But I, to I can't see it. Understate that enough. In terms of like, uh, I think what's crazy is we we expected that because you'll watch like a Peter Thiel video and he's like, oh yeah, um, most people in Silicon Valley, the ones that make it are somewhere on the spectrum because to think uh, against the grain, against the herd mentality, you probably have to have something that just like doesn't resonate with them, which is often Asperger's. So it's like, okay, yeah, we kind of gut that people behave a little bit weird, but until you get there and see all those people in real life and try to have conversations with them or see them interacting in general, it's like, oh, they got it bad. It's like, this, this was like, so surprising we got it. to us just trying to have conversations they got it bad it's, it's another level oh we were watching the show i don't know how, oh i uh, love on the that's spectrum. not nda dude, <laughs> oh, dude a new show love on the that spectrum can't be a show dude uh we don't want to go down legal. that hole but basically we that don't. was one of the biggest don't. surprises <laughs> we really got to stay away from that um <laughs> It's just like, wow, this is kind of why we wanted to get to this room is like, oh, we want to get to this place uh, of the most successful people so they we can be friends with them. And pretty much right off the bat, we're like, do we? Because I don't think they really have a lot of the same traits that we value. Like, I, I like playing like sports and making jokes and I don't know, having fun versus they're very like. Uh, bookwormy like that they, they like the nerdy stuff but to a different degree than i'm used to like they would they would love to just talk nerd and it's like i like that but i also get a, a much higher high off of playing hockey or like hitting tennis or spike ball pickleball whatever it might be let me uh, give you an example and that's just let me give you an example realm. because um the the besties were playing poker and they're playing like 100 200 uh blinds <laughs> with a five thousand dollar buy-in and we saw them. It was late at night. They were tired. Nobody was talking. The wives have gone to bed. And we were like, well, shit. We have more fun playing $7 poker with our college friends, drinking to all hell and like giving each other a hard time. We're like, <laughs> if what we thought was we want to be playing poker with the besties, turns out, no, we want to spend more time with our college friends. It's like, right. Huh. right. So that made us question everything. We're like, oh, we're trying to get here, but then do we want to be here? And so now we're, we're just rattled. <laughs> we're spinning the whole time and we're seeing all these successful people and uh, kind of two strategies. Okay. Going back to our, oh, I'll get to Bermuda's strategy in a second, but kind of the first inadvertent rule that we came up with was, uh, I don't even think we have a term for this yet, but it's kind of like Bermuda related where we picked like one of the most popular tables to sit at where people would want to go and they're all chatting and hanging out and eating. And we're like, okay, we don't want to do that right now. Let's just claim our spot at the cool kids table and just sit right in the middle. <laughs> it's like right in the middle. Belk, you want to sit at the ends, but I'm like, no, at the ends, you're losing 50% of the value because you're, you're only getting only getting people on one side. So we're like, let's be right in the middle, get people on both sides and just see who shows up. 
because they're bound to be cool people. And uh, so we do this. And then across from us, one person sits down and they're like, oh, hey, who are you? I'm like, uh, Dylan and Henry, like, who are you? Hi, I'm, I'm Jeff. And it's like, hi, Jeff. Uh, what do you do? Oh, well, I made this thing that probably everyone that you know <laughs> has used. And they're like, oh, that's really cool, Jeff. <laughs> that's right. We have used that. <laughs> How is your shrimp? Like, what do you do? We, we, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we made the video uh, yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. He's like, oh, okay. That's nice. <laughs> How about that? And the wagon? someone else comes over to, <laughs> they come to sit next to us and I'm like, oh, wow, I've been stalking this person for the last week and they just want to sit next to us. That's really neat. They go to sit down and then the person like a little bit farther beyond is like, no, we actually reserved those seats. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You can't reserve seats. That doesn't work like that. And the, that guy and his friend are kind of like the two people that just got excluded from the table. They're like, oh. Well, I guess we can't sit here. I'm, I'm like wide eyed, dear eyed, just like no, no, no. Please sit, please sit. I want to talk about your podcast and how successful you are and all the things that you've created. But and then they go and sit you, at another table. You know who reserved the seats? Just, just the woman who did everything we used all the time, all the time. I use it <laughs> all the time. <laughs> oh, that was her. I didn't even realize yes. it was her. Yes. Oh. CEO, oh, and then who'd she reserve them for? Well, this is this is really a bummer when it's, it's crazy. <laughs> NDA out the wazoo, but <laughs> then another person who it's like, gotta be. We I've been stalking things. for a while, sat down, so I'm like, oh, I'll take that. Um, this is really obnoxious if you're not, uh, whatever. And no, then this other person the sits down, and they're like, uh, super, super cool, and we kind of made that person cry by accident. But um, the <laughs> point is like, our strategy because it was weird. <laughs> For us to wait, <laughs> you don't have to gloss over that. You don't have to gloss over how you made him cry. You just can't say who it is, because uh... <laughs> that—that that was one of our strategies. We're like, well, okay, we're here. We we took a shortcut to the absolute pinnacle. This is like PayPal. My, all these people made it in Silicon Valley. We're sitting next to this guy. We're like, all right, our new strategy will just be let's ask the questions that you know nobody else is asking. We're twenty five years old get their advice on like, should we go for the moonshot? Should we do what you did? And you were just asking him really deep questions. What was the one that made him cry? I think I asked him one question and it was accidentally deep. <laughs> That's right. No. So, so our big thing was like, basically the way I approach questions, this person sat down and they're like, introduced themselves and like, oh, you're from Chicago. I'm from Chicago too. And it's like, oh, you happen to be one of the most successful people in Chicago. That's awesome. So are we kind of uh, sleeping on the floor. Um, and so we're talking and we just embody the like, hey, we're dumb. We're like, we see we're in this world. It's really interesting. A lot of rich, successful people. Do we want this world? That's kind of our frame. Like help us, guide us, be, be our mentor. And so uh, a little bit of back and forth. I can hardly hear because it's like some popular old people playing music. Uh, I don't even know who they are, but um, supposedly important people. And so I, I asked this question uh, at some point in the conversation. I'm like, hey, uh, one thing we noticed is like with ourselves right now, we're kind of starting on the road of success, right? Like we're deviating from our friend group uh, in college or high school and kind of leaving them behind. Like it's hard to share experiences together. It's like you being uber successful. What's your perspective? Like, when you get to that level of success, are you leaving your friends behind? And, and was it worth and it? And this is where it's a combination of like, <laughs> right, right, right. Was it worth leaving your friends behind? And I'm just like, this is just another question in the day of daily. And, uh, they take, they take a second. They're like, Hmm. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Uh, like, and I look at Henry and they look at me he's like, oh, 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 I like questions you haven't been asked before. And he takes a long time. Like one of those, you look at uh, Elon Musk on Lex Friedman when he gets asked about like, uh, when you encounter a problem, like, what do you do? And he's like, or I forget the exact phrasing, but he basically paused for 20 seconds. Kind of a similar vibe. This guy basically paused for 20 seconds. He's like, uh, you know, I have 
lost a lot of friends. <laughs> I had to leave them behind. None of my friends today were my friends growing up. Henry and I are like, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> and you were you were closer, so I don't know if you could. I kind of like lost. I, I I lost track. But what was well, he saying after that? But then the, the the cognitive dissonance in his answer, I asked him, was like, well, was it worth it? And he's like, oh yeah. Oh, right. after after crying a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's worth it. Look at my house, and look at look at you know these people here now. Right. And it was also like, interesting. He didn't say look at my house. He said, I'm Sachs's neighbor. I just bought this fifty million dollar vacation house. And it's like Yeah, but that that huh. was his justification. I mean, he didn't have to tell us the number. <sighs> right. And then right. he's like, Boys, just just go so, for the grand slam. Just go for the grand slam. And we're like, Huh. First half of your answer didn't sound like you should go for the grand slam. <laughs> right, right, right. Sounds like you should spend more time uh, are with we the people cry you love. When we hit the grand slam? right right so that rattled us and we kind of like came out of that like for for us it was kind of confirmation bias because like oh we saw the inner side like oh he he doesn't like what success has brought him or like he likes it but just the material sides of it like he didn't mention oh my friends today are closer than ever we we get along in every aspect it's like no i had to leave all my friends behind before to get to this level but now look at my house okay uh that's probably not something we want. Um, so we go along, uh, around that same night and like the idea of the Bermuda Triangle is we found basically the most successful people at this party. They were all kind of clumped together. And Henry and I, we, we look at each other and I'm like, uh, I think you said, I forget what it is, but like we looked at the triangle. We're like, oh, we're right in the middle. <laughs> we're just in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> it's like, look at all the points. It's all billionaires at all the points and they're all talking to other billionaires. So it's like, five or six different people i actually have a photo of it but I, I can't put it up but uh i you know they didn't let photos in social media but it's basically like crazy success, successful people and we're like too scared or like we wouldn't even know what to talk about with them so we just sit right in the middle we're just like looking at each other the whole time like we're also that, like if we guy, just if we just mm, oh ah ooh, ooh. we're ooh, like if we just stand ooh. in the bermuda triangle we will absorb everything everything from from the points of this beautiful triangle let's just stand here and soak it up fleance i don't know if it actually worked but it was really cool to just be in the middle of it i don't think we absorbed anything it was just like we get, we got the energy uh, the wavelengths going through our bodies because we were in the middle of it um but it was really weird dude it's like it's such a strange feeling um so hey, let me give you a bermuda triangle story uh, let me give you a bermuda triangle story because yeah. we did one, we did we did one the next night. We're like, we have nobody to talk to. Okay, what's the highest yield thing we can do? Let's just go stand in that Bermuda Triangle over there, and at some point, the stars will align and all the points oh. will they will all get sucked into the Bermuda black hole, and that'll be us. And so we're doing that, and this famous right, right. Uh, producer... okay, so picture this at a party. <laughs> um, it's just it's white night, right? So we're on the beach. It's like the most beautiful beach you've ever seen. Just everyone's just just the nines or whatever. And they're all whites. Henry and I were just standing together and we're like, Oh, that's a cool person. And we just slowly shuffle over. <laughs> like, Let's get in the Bermuda. <laughs> so we just like shimmy our way right over. We're not trying to talk to this person, right? We're just trying to be close enough. And there's the plausible deniability. Oh, it was an open area. We just wanted to be kind of nearby. <laughs> and you can take over from there. And, and we also, in one point of the Bermuda Triangle, we had created a pretty good relationship with one of the people talking. So we're like, we'll just get sucked into this at some point. Let's go oh, yeah. stand in the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, I that forgot was, about uh, the, the whim, oh, dude. dude. That's, a, that's a whole episode. That's a whole episode. That's a whole episode. Write it down. I got locked in okay, my body. Okay. That's a different episode. <laughs> we need 20 minutes for that. Dude, that was crazy. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, so we're in the Bermuda Triangle. And this famous producer who got the craziest musical act the night before comes over. I'm like, <laughs> and he brings a magician <laughs> and the magician starts doing tricks. And of course we all kind of, the, the Bermuda triangle starts to condense. David Sachs is in the Bermuda triangle. Um, so that worked to our favor because we knew David Sachs. So now we had social proof for the other points of the triangle to come form around us. 
And the magician starts doing a magic trick to um, one person in the Bermuda Triangle who has done everything we use and know and are today, thanks to the dot-com uh, uh, era. And he does a trick. The magician does a trick to this guy we all know. And he blows his mind. Dude, he stumped him so bad. He stumped him. This guy chooses. So it's a, right. he's, a, he's an illusionist. And the famous person we all know and love chooses like this really obscure middle of nowhere place in Namibia for his city. And the magician reads his mind and gets it right. It was like Sikamwe. I don't fucking know. Made absolutely no sense. And this is like, you go around at the party, like we kind of asked this uh, to a couple of these people. We're like, hey, you're our pinnacle of success. Who do you look up to? Like, oh, we look up to this person. And pretty much everyone would say the same person. And so now we see uh, the mindfuck magic being performed to objectively the smartest person at this party. I'm like, and who does like he look up to? Of five. And, his, and his friend is like, philosophers. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I read philosophy. So what was funny is like, I don't know if this person, this person probably doesn't like being stumped. Like they're used to at least having some logical idea of how something worked but this is like give them magic it's literal magic and it's like i can't figure out this fucking witchcraft so they're like oh that was cool do you want another one and he's just like no and and storms off <laughs> he's like no wanted nothing to do with, with the mind games i've and never we, seen we somebody turn down a magic so trick. basically it's like <laughs> right magic's always fun but for him it wasn't fun because he was losing <laughs> like oh <laughs> um so that okay we're jumping around in the times um oh one thing that happened too it was just really weird it was this sort of event where like okay this one super random thing happened like uh this yacht like we were this is a beach resort and like <laughs> in the little i don't know like safe harbor area people were snorkeling and there were different yachts and one of the yachts apparently they weren't paying super close attention. It got close to the rocks. And before they could actually like get it out of the rocks, uh, a wave pushed it onto the rocks. So now it got beached, uh, semi beached on the rocks and someone tried to get off and like push it back into the water, but it just kept getting slammed by uh, waves. And the next thing you know, there's a hole in it and the ship starts sinking. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck's happening? This is a five-star beautiful resort. And that ship, that, that yacht is sinking. <laughs> so uh, I take a photo. I send it to my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, there's a ship sinking. And uh, kind of forget about it. Everyone's just watching and talking about it. Super great icebreaker because now you can go up to random people and be like, hey, that ship's sinking. Do you know what happened? And they all just, <laughs> we all just gossip about that for like two hours. But in the process, I sent it to my girlfriend but said nothing else. And then uh, like six hours later, I, I get a text from her. She's like, what the fuck? This uh, A-list celebrity uh, just put up this tweet with millions of views from the exact same spot that you sent me that photo of the same yacht sinking. What the fuck's going on? Huh. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that was her. <laughs> I Next was in the same pool, in the pool. as her. We was in the pool. <laughs> she actually tweeted that. I don't know. Like, uh, people got to figure out who these people are. She tweeted it. It's all over TMZ. Yeah. Yeah, they could probably figure it out. Uh, that's an easy Google search. But um, yeah, no, it was just, it was nuts in that sense. So basically, like, the pinnacle of vacations, the the craziest people performing, even someone else crazier was supposed to, but it's a uh, kind of crazy story about, like, why they couldn't. Um, but uh, let me look through stories. Uh, I, I must have got some takeaways from it. Uh, maybe there was also a roast. Yeah, hit us with the takeaways. It's like, I don't know why. The roast was roast. so brutal. Um, do you want to do a separate episode? Uh, on our let dinner? me give you some nugget takeaways and then big takeaways. What dinner? Oh, I forgot about the dinner, dude. We probably, yeah, yeah. talk about the dinner. That should be that separate. Time. The dinner? Uh, separate but equal. Okay. It's maybe, I think separate but equal. Well, not much really happened, so maybe, yeah, I we, could, could, maybe I could, we could maybe we could stick it in. 
No, let's put it in Wim Hof. Let's just put those right together. <laughs> okay. All right. That, takeaways. Yeah, come takeaways. Back to that takeaways. One. Um, takeaways. Long story short, with that, we had a three hour dinner with David Sachs and his wife, just us four. And we had a lot of just like shooting the shit and also lessons that they gave us and kind of back and forth. So we'll talk about that some more in the, the locked up Wim Hof episode. Subscribe. Uh, which will probably be tomorrow. But, um, so quick little nuggets. Um, and then I have four big takeaways. I tried to get it down to three, but I couldn't figure out how to condense it some more. Um, one, there's this person in the besties and they're kind of known as the least successful bestie. And what's funny is we see from the outside, it's like, oh, that person looks like they have a little bit of this Napoleon con- complex of like, oh, I'm the little guy amongst big people. And it's like, they're kind of scrappy like that. And we asked Sachs, I even think, I'm like, or we said like, oh, is that true? Like, is that person really like it? And it's like, yeah, they, they just never got out of the relative game because you can come to a party like this and sure, you're a billionaire, but you're talking to someone who's even more successful as a billionaire. And it's like, uh, when do you get out of that game? This person clearly felt like insecurity from it and uh, everyone just gives them shit about it. But it's true. It's like, Sax was like, yeah, I guess it's from the Sax conversation. So fuck. Um, basically, like, you just got to at some point realize that's not the game to play because there's always someone more successful. And the, the more successful you are, the more parties you'll go to. And then you'll just be the little guy always unless you like measure yourself by a different metric. Um, that wasn't supposed to be a nugget. Probably should say that. But another <laughs> quick one was... Um, I actually went to this beach club yesterday to play tennis and my friend was like, oh, you got to wear all whites. I'm like, fuck, I don't, I don't have all whites. And it seemed really goofy to me. I'm like, this beach club, granted, it's, there are like uber successful people at this beach club, but I'm like, ah, why do I have to do that? Like, I didn't wear all whites to go play tennis or pickleball at the craziest party of 2022. It's like all those people they kind of dressed up nicely, but it wasn't like some of them were dressed up like scrubs or like didn't care. We're wearing t-shirts. And it's like, if, if they're the most successful and they don't give a shit about dress code, why should I give a shit about dress code at my local beach club? Like that just seemed really goofy to me. I'm like, the whole world isn't real. Everyone wearing a suit. It's like just for their own insecurities to like keep buttoned up nice and be like, Oh, I'm playing the game. Right. It's like, no, you're not. Cause the people that won the game aren't playing the game like that. It was kind of like one of the people he's known as uh, uh, just walking around barefoot, or at least he was doing it for a lot of the party. And they're like, that's so funny, dude. You oh, show is that his thing? Like, formal event and you're just barefoot. Uh, I think he does it a lot. Um, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, okay. Uh, this, okay, last <laughs> one before I'll let you jump into your takeaways and I'll get my actual takeaways. But um, one was when Jane, your sister, texted you this at the start going into the the weekend. And it's like, this weekend, basically, we, we committed. Uh, we didn't actually do this because the Sack family is super nice and they paid for our hotel, which was like $8,000 plus. Um, but basically, it was a trip that was like $10,000, easily over $10,000. It's like, uh, we don't necessarily have that and just like free money to spend. And your sister was like, why would you spend that much? Like, how can that be worth it? And to us, that was just almost a joke. Like, we're like, what do you mean? How is this not worth it? It's like, we just shortcut literally 30 years. All these people have been building up their reputation, their, their, their success for all their life to get to a moment like this. It was just like an awesome 50th birthday party. And we get to now pay like this small sum, which people would give a lifetime for to get into. That's a no brainer for us. And I don't know if your sister came around to thinking differently, but it's just weird that people wouldn't make that sort of investment or it wouldn't seem like an investment. Like, plus we get to enjoy the amenities and like uh, the best food in the world. And like, we get to actually get the value out of it. It's like, we're actually, it's like two birds with one stone. Like when you get an awesome experience, plus like be around these amazing people. Uh, any thoughts on you that? You want me to come in? Just keep putting, <laughs> no, she, she, uh, I don't think she can. I don't around. know. It's hard with the Wi-Fi That's, cause it's. Yeah. I got a little uh, bit of a lag, but um, that's one of those big, like you can, you can lead a horse to water. You can't force them to drink until you're in our shoes and you see all this opportunity and literally how it affects like clips bottom line. They just, all these costs seem like losses to you, but to us, it's like, oh, that's 10 grand we can pay to make another five 
connections or friends or opportunities or million dollars. So it's like, is your glass half empty or half full kind of deal? Right. Like I would have taken out a loan for like 50 or a hundred thousand dollars just to see what we we thought we were going to have to pay for it. And we did until Jackie said we shouldn't by the end of it. And the, the price was never going to be our reason for not going to this ever. Right. Um, okay. I got, I'm going to keep like one of my takeaways. I'll, I'll whittle it down to three takeaways for myself, but, uh, all right, three, it. three takeaways from, uh, from the event. No, what do you got? You got anything? Oh, um, I, my, my one big one is especially coming from my background, which is like, take the moonshot, do the venture back thing, build the biggest, baddest, hairiest, audacious thing you can. My takeaway was like, I don't think I'm any more happy or unhappy compared to all these people here. And they spent 30 years Mm. building these things, all of their energy, all of their time, losing friends, um, gaining friends. Like I think the PayPal mafia worked out because there were a dozen of them and they became friends. But I was kind of like, Oh, oh, this is an Ali Abdal. It's like the, the journey, wait, the destin. Hey, the journey's where it's at. I don't know about the destination, but the journey is where where it's at. at. (laughs) The journey's where it's at. And so, uh, I want to build big things, but I'm like, we kind of already made it and that's enough for me. So, uh, you cashed out lifestyle business cashed out. Uh, Yeah. That's, that's, I think one of our big realizations early on, I'm like, this is amazing. And we get to the beach and it's one of the most beautiful beaches I've seen, but I'm like the 80, 20 of this, as in like, how can you get 80% of this, this experience? Well, I already have it. Like I grew up on a a beach almost as beautiful, probably more beautiful than this. Uh, granted I didn't have like servants that would stop in the street and be like, like would just nod and be like, buenos dias and, and literally (laughs) stop what they're doing. Like a lot of cool, just little experiences, but that's just the 20% like on the margin makes life better. But the 80%, like being with your friends on the beach in a cool place, like we can do that in a, in a month when people get their time off and they don't have the time off. So it's a real bitch to like organize things, but you already have that. It's just a matter of appreciating that. And then like, sure. If you want to like, uh, have that big moonshot just cause you need something to chase and like the byproduct is a lot of money. Sure. You can get up to like 85, 90, 95%, whatever it is, but we already have pretty much everything we want. Granted, a lot of people don't. Also, so like getting past that hundred, two hundred thousand dollar a year threshold kind of gets you that right. 80%. Right. So my, my 80, 20 then after this weekend on wealth is like, if you want to live luxuriously, you want to do everything we're doing at this party. If that's your prerogative, fine. You need like 6 million bucks total, 10 million bucks. And you're done. Exit the game. I guess Felix Dennis said like make 20 or 30 million bucks by age 35 and be done with the game. Or at least, you know, right. play a different game. So Which think, is yeah. kind of what they were preaching to us. Well, uh, and, and to even we'll talk about to that your point last week, thing. you're like, wait, to your point last week, you're like, why should we save and, and invest? What if we just like did everything now? What if we just spent time with friends and family and like spent every last dollar and did everything now? And I think that's an interesting way to look at it too. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, my, my big takeaways, I guess we already talked about two of them, but I'll kind of group them together. It's like, oh, if friends and environment, like for me, just like being around friends and like people that you really enjoy in life, like that's pretty much all that I'm looking for. Like I want to be in New York just because my friends are there and like play sports and do fun things. Like that's, that's pretty much life to me. Um, and also like, chase whatever I'm curious about. Um, so then going to this party, it's like, okay, seeing the most successful people to be that successful, to be a billionaire, it's almost a prerequisite to have some sort of on the spectrum Asperger's, like not a prerequisite, but like 50% of the people there have it at least. Um, granted this was like a self-selected party. So maybe it's higher than normal. I don't know, but it, it seemed really high. Like something was off and I'm like, Oh, I probably wouldn't be friends with them. If I, if they were just like a normal dude making 50 grand, like, I probably wouldn't want to hang out with you, but they're also super interesting. So when it's like, I don't know if I would naturally be friends with these people. Plus this, uh, the Sawhill guy that's said like, 
uh, you want to go to invite only parties. He also said, hey, you can only really be friends with people that are like plus or minus five years. So we're 25. You can only really go to like 20 to 30. Like in the 20s, you'll be friends with people. But outside of that, it's really hard to connect with someone. Like they haven't had the same childhood experiences. They probably didn't play uh, Modern Warfare growing up on Xbox. And you can talk about that. And it's just like a different gap. So now they're more like the mentors. But do you really want to hang out with your mentors 24-7? Probably not. It's more so the college friends. Um, and then last one for this episode was what I realized we were scared to go in, into conversation because we're just guys that made videos for sax on Twitter. But what I realized pretty early on is a lot of these people aren't entertaining. Like they're really good at the technical side of things and may, maybe like growing a business, but the marketing side of things, like being that personality, especially now they're obsessed with like how things go viral on TikTok and uh, reels and YouTube shorts. We get a lot of questions about that. So we kind of started to go to like the, the viral clip guys, like we're the viral guys that sort of became the, the personality, the identity that we assumed as like, what can we be the best in the world at? For us, it's viral videos. I'm like, oh, we just assume that now we have something to go into every conversation. Like, oh, what do you guys do? Oh, we're just like the best in the world at viral videos. Like, oh, that's something interesting to pretty much everybody because everyone wants to have whatever products or whatever company they have go viral, get seen by the masses because that's how you're successful. It's like, oh, if that's our angle, now it's a much easier in to any conversation. It's a good one, Pop. That's what that's we're currently figuring out. I, I wish I wish everyone could see. I just get like five pixels and uh, a three second delay. So just, these conversations are tough. But can, we'll be can I leave you with an week, inside joke? So uh, that'll be nice, I guess. Can I leave you with an inside always. joke? Gras, yeah. I said always. Gracias. Garlic, garlic.